and a good morning to all. A lovely Sunday morning to you. I pray that you are all well. I pray that uh, you, the lockdown is not affecting you too much and that uh, you keep yourself busy and then you find new things to do as well. Uh, there are so many things that we can do when we are at home. And uh, so I pray that uh, you will be keeping yourself busy. This morning I want to look at, uh, at two, two or three scriptures. And if you've got your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 12. And I'm going to read verse 50. Matthew 12, verse 50, it says, For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister. Uh, that, that came about when Jesus was ministering. Uh, his, his mother and brother were outside, and they, 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 they told the guys outside, please just tell him that we are outside. And uh, when they told Jesus, uh, your brother, your mother are outside, and then he brought this verse out, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, the same is my brother, the same is my mother. And I want us this morning to understand uh, where we come from with this. Uh, let's, go, let's go to the book of John. We just want to get some supporting scriptures to that. John chapter 5. And we read verse 19. John, John chapter 5 verse 19. It says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what, the, what he sees the Father do. For what the things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. And then, you go down to verse 30, John 5, verse 30. It says, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. So, when you speak about the ministry of Jesus, when we speak about the success of his ministry, there are many things we can uh, that can be uh, linked to his success. We can say, well, uh, you know, you, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Uh, God anointed him. Uh, he, he knew the Word and he knew all this. But I believe that one of the main factor of his ministry, one of the main factor that made him a successful ministry, is exactly what we read: is doing the will of the Father. When our heart has purpose to do the will of God, then uh, it, will, it will make the way. Remember when God said to Joshua, uh, do everything uh, that my law says, and you shall make your way successful if you meditate on my word day and night. Meditating on the word is finding out, and as I spoke before, is finding out what God thinks and how God sees things and what God says. And yet we have Jesus saying that I do nothing of my own. What I see the Father do, I do. What I hear the Father say, I say. He say, I can uh, of my own, I can do nothing. And we, we find ourselves in that situation as well. When we are, when it concerns the affairs of the kingdom, we can do nothing of our own, but except through the Father. I want uh, I want to talk about many 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 people, many many believers uh, worldwide. Sometimes we say, you know, I want to serve God. I really want to serve God. As long as it's not inconvenient for me. I desire to do the will of God. As long as it's, it doesn't make it too uncomfortable for me. I want to hear His word. I want to know His word. As long as I can just, I can just pass down to someone and let the someone do the work. And then I want to work for the Lord. But as, as, as long as the plans, as long as my plans, my own plans are not disturbed, I will do, I will work the, uh, the will of the Lord. And why am I saying this? It, it might, it might sound, sound harsh, but why I say this is because when I look at the church, one Sunday the church is full, the other Sunday the church is not full. And it's not only in one church, it happens all over the place. The, the, the number of the people in churches 
varies uh, uh, every Sunday, one Sunday after the other. I mean, many pastors uh, will agree with that. We don't have always the same number. Sometimes your, your church is like over full. You have to carry seats out. And other times you wonder where, where, were, the, where were last Sunday's people. And I believe that these, some of these that we spoke about, uh, I desire to do the will of God as long as my plans are not disturbed. And this is one of the reasons why some people don't make it a habit to be in a church every Sunday. Doing the will of the Father is it's going to change you. It's going to put your, your own plans apart. And we, are, we, we see, uh, I, w- I want to bring Jonah into this. Now Jonah, Jonah one one says, and the and the uh, and the word of the Lord came to Jonah, and he and he told him what he wanted to do. I want you to go to Nineveh, uh, the city is doomed, but I want you to go there and preach the gospel. Maybe they will repent. This is this was more or less what the what God was saying, and here we see jo- Jonah running away. Now again, we we, we can we can discuss many reasons why Jonah went away. But I also think that one of the purpose was whatever he was going to do was going to interfere with the direction he thought he was he was going and doing right. Because remember, remember Jonah was a, a well-known prophet in his own community. At the, at the time, uh, the, the, the Israel nation was being restored because they were held captive by the Syrians and everything, and it, uh, they, they, they were being restored. And Jonah was a part of that. He had actually prophesied that God would rescue his people and his people would be restored. So he was part of that. He announced it before it happened. So he was he was he was he was known by the people. He was esteemed by the people. He was respected by the people. And and. He, he was he was doing he was doing okay, because uh, he wasn't like an, an old old guy full of rags there somewhere out in the wild. No, he, he was staying in a, in a, in a house, and he was he, he was uh, financially he wasn't unstable, because when he ran away, and this is from the the, the Hebrew scholars, some of them assume, and they 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 kind of guide this into a direction where when Jonah came to the to the port to take the, 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 the ship uh, to, to escape from the Lord, he bought not only the, the, his ticket on the ship, but he bought he, he chartered the whole ship. He hired the ship, the crew and the the, 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 uh, the content of the ship, the content of the ship, the cargo of the ship. He, he, he chartered it to escape. So he wasn't doing too too bad, but then he he, he just ran away. He, he 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 figured he knew God, because you know in order in order for 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 us to be in the will of God, we have to hear from the Lord, we have to be willing to speak what the Lord says, and we are to, we must be willing to obey what the Lord says. These are some of the things that a prophet must go through. And Jonah knew God, and he knew this Nineveh. Well, if he, if he was going to preach the word to them, the chance of them be repenting was better than the chance of them not repenting. And he knew that about God. God was a God, he knew God as a gracious God. He knew God as a, a God of that restores things. And. But it interfered with his own plans, because he didn't want Nineveh to be saved. He he says no, you know they deserve they deserve what they get. But God had other plans, and this is one thing that we need to understand in the kingdom of God. Everybody matters, even those outside the kingdom matters to God, because God loves everybody. loves He loves the whole world. He hates the sin. He loves the sinner. And he wants to use you and me to reach the, the, the sinners outside there. He wants you and me to reach the people and get them into the kingdom. And 
So here we come to a position in our own lives right now. Maybe you feel that God is going to hinder your plans. I know many people make plans for their lives. They, they want to achieve this and they want to get to this point and they want to have this amount of money in the bank or whatever. They want to have this. They want to have that. And they want to go out. Now, one, one thing that we, we have to take note. Jesus, when his disciples followed him, and remember the parable of the rich man, he says it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. That was a parable. And his disciples were listening. Now for those who, for those who, who, uh, who assume that poverty is part of Christianity, when Jesus brought that parable out, being a poor man, uh, uh, being poor, the disciples being in a poor state, as 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 it people make you believe, the reaction would have been, "Amen." You know, yes, we agree with that. But what was the reaction? They turned. The Bible says they turned to Jesus and say, "Who then can be saved?" Now that doesn't sound like a poor man's uh, reaction to the parable. If you, if you talk to a poor man and say, you know what, uh, if you go to a poor man and say, uh, you should get all the rich people together, divide all the money, and divide it on everybody. The poor man would say, yes, amen, I agree with that. And the disciples, if they were living in poverty, as the tradition says, as, uh, that is being taught in the church, then they should not have that kind of reaction. Then who can be saved? Because Jesus was telling them, you have to leave everything. Leave everything behind. Now, the rich man, the Bible says, the rich man went away sad because he had many possessions. But what he failed to do, he could have stopped there and asked Jesus, okay, what, what will happen to my, to my stuff? What will happen to my dreams? What will happen to my possessions? And Jesus would have given the same answer he gave to his disciples. He says, everything that you give up for the kingdom and for me, will be repaid a hundredfold in the life to come, in this life, and in the life to come. So, this is a kind of mindset Jesus wants us to have. When we give something up, we don't give it up to lose it. We give it, we give it up to get more from the Lord, so that we can start blessing others. He, the kingdom of God is a, a kingdom of growth. Not of lack, not of less, not of taking away so that, you know, uh, I want you as poor, as poor as anything so that you can worship me. That's dictatorship. We serve a loving God. We serve a loving God. So there's no, there's no, there's no such a thing as, you know, oh, I'm giving everything up for the Lord. Well, if that's your decision. If you want to live like this, it's okay. But it's not, it's not a, a law that we must live by. Some people want to do that. Praise God, do that. If you if you want every, give everything to the Lord, that's 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 okay. But God doesn't want us to lack in anything. Does God doesn't want to have less in anything? What God wants is that everything that you have must be surrendered to Him. Everything. And when you are when you give everything up for the Lord, you never lose anything. It's when you start keeping things that you lose it. So when we look at Jonah. We need to look, need, need, need to look uh, at our lives as well. You know, th there's a confusion sometimes between a comfort zone and a, and a day of and, and the rest that God speaks about. The Bible talks about uh, there the lies a rest for the children of God to enter in. Now, don't 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 confuse those two: the place of rest for the children of God and the comfort zone. One is God given; the other one is not. The comfort zone is not a God given thing. A comfort zone is when you refuse to move forward because the things around you are now so comfortable and so well and so good and now you know exactly what to do, how to do and whatever you're doing is working for you. Now you kind of know, uh, let's not stir the pot. Let's not uh, uh, you know, listen too well to the Lord because He might, he might get, get me to change my direction. He might get me to go in some other way. That's a comfort zone. And if you go to scriptures... 
The comfort zone is a, pla a place of backsliding. So if you think you're in comfort zone, you're actually moving backwards. And you are backsliding. That's scriptural. So the comfort zone is not the same as the rest of the believer. Uh, the, the rest of the believer, and we, we, will, we might talk about it some other, some other time, but the rest of the believer is a place of authority. Where the comfort zone is a, a, a place of idleness. Where because of the way you are, the, the things that you have now, you don't want to lose, so you're not going to move forward. You're not going to listen to the to the to the uh, the prophet of God. You're not going to listen to the will of God. You're not going to listen to the voice of God. You're not going to listen to the Holy Spirit because you are scared that the moment the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you're going to start losing what you've been comfortable with. So there's a place of surrendering your life to to God in such a way that. It doesn't matter. Everything is everything is God's anyway. So God, whatever I've got, if you want to use it, use it. I know that you're going to give me more of that. And you're going to bless me more, in maybe of the same thing, but something that will be more beneficial for me. It will call that whatever you God's give us, whatever God's going to give me when I give of myself will promote me will move, make me to move forward, will make me grow, will be beneficial for me. When you, when, you, when, a, when, a, when you look at a plant outside in the garden and you see the plant is not reacting the way it should be, it's not growing as well, what happens? You dig a bigger hole, you take the whole plant out and you go to a place where you know, okay, then you just realize this plant needs more sun. It needs more sun uh, and less shade. So what happens, you, you dig a big hole, you take it out and go put it to a place where, you know, this plant is going to be to have more, more, more of the sun and less of the shade. And you plant it there and within a year, this thing is like almost double the size. Now it's, it's, it's been found in the environment that it's supposed to be. And as children of God, this is a place that we need to be in a place of development, in a place of growth, in a place of forward movement. And that is a thing when you reach that place of rest that God's got for his believer for the believers. Because the place of rest is a place of authority. You've got authority over the things around you, and God starts, can start moving you forward. Where the place of uh, the comfort zone is a place where you don't want to move forward because whatever you have right now, it's so nice. Now, very quickly, I want to say that a comfort zone is not always where. Uh, a place where uh, you don't want to uh, stir the pot. It's also a place where you brought yourself because of something that has happened. Either in your life, in your family, in your job, and you are frustrated, and you are upset, and sometimes upset with God, and you are, you are mad at God for some, some other reason, and now you, you just put up barriers, and you, you, you put yourself into a, like a, a small uh, enclosure, where you think this is where I'm going to say, I don't, I'm not going to launch out, I'm not going to uh, be so diligent in my prayer time, I'm not going to be diligent in going to church, I will, I will have a bit of the world with me, I will have a bit of the church with me. And that's your comfort zone. And I, and I can tell you now, based on scripture, this will never work. God will not, will not interfere with that, because God is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a person that says, it's your own will to serve me. And this is what we read. Jesus' whole purpose was to do the will of God. And that's the success of his ministry. And if you want to make a success uh, yourself as a Christian, as a believer, then the, 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 the foundation of that is doing the will of God. And this is what the kingdom of God is about. It's the kingdom of God. Not the your kingdom, not the God next door kingdom. It's the kingdom of God. When you are in the kingdom of God, you do the will of God. You know, you're not going to go there and stand still and say, you know what, I am very happy the way I am. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going to church quite regularly, uh, but I don't want to be involved in anything. I just want to go home and enjoy my Sunday roast and whatever. Uh, and enjoy, when, read, the, 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 read the Bible whenever I want. I don't want to be pushed around doing certain things that will disrupt my plans for my life. And right now, you know, you know, some of you, you know right now, as I'm speaking to you, you know you're not at the place where you should be. You know that. Whether you've been in a comfort zone because 
this is a this is a and you 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 are going to church and you are reading your Bible, you are doing prayer and everything, but you're not moving forward. You are escaping. You are running away as Jonah did. You are running away from what God wants you to do. You are running away from, uh, uh, in a sense where uh, you, you are not effective in the calling that God has for you. And it's 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 a place. It's a dangerous place because you get so used to not going to church regularly. You get so used of not reading the Bible regularly. You get so used to, oh, you know, I, I can pray now and then. It's it's fine. Uh, you know, we've got we've got that that saying. God understands my my position. I agree. God does understand, but God wants you to move forward. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of growth, a kingdom of expansion on all levels and all areas of life. When you are in the kingdom, we are supposed to grow. And uh, I, 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 wrote, I wrote something uh, this morning. Jonah. I mean, it's four chapters. The book of Jonah is only four chapters. But up to today, millions of people have studied the book of Jonah. Millions of people. It's, it's been taught into the Sunday school. It's been taught into the Bible. I'm a big fan of it. I talk about it in Bible class. I, I, I speak about it. I explain a lot of things about it. It's only four chapters, but it's a, like an ongoing study. And millions of people are studying the book of Jonah. And Jonah could have missed the biggest supernatural event of history if he kept running away. Jonah left a mark because at the end he repented and he did what he what he did. He did what he, he was supposed to do. And he, the fact that he did what he did and he never got saved has repercussion in the annals of history. It changed the world. Imagine if Nineveh, and there's a, uh, some thousands of inhabitants at the time, if Nineveh would have been destroyed, imagine how many generations would have never come from that. There's a calling upon your life. There's a calling upon your life. Whether you are mad at God or not, the, the calling is still there. Whether you're upset because of some, something said, uh, something happened in your, in your past, something happened in the church, something happened in your family, get over it. Get over it. God is concerned about you. Get on with your life. Forgive the people. Be, uh, forgive the people. Forgive them. Forgive them. And God will deal with them. What's important is your ministry. You need to move, for, to move forward. Don't fall into the trap of Satan and says, you know what? You're just at the right place. Stay still and enjoy what you have. No. No. And you can speak to people that have been in mercy for 40 years, 50 years, and 60 years. They will tell you they're growing. They keep on growing all the time. There's never a point where we'll stop growing spiritually. There will never be a point. I want to challenge you. Think about the mark that you could leave. Uh, that supernatural event that could happen because you just turned around and said, you know what, I, I was in a comfort zone. Yes, I was mad at God. Yes, I was upset because God, uh, uh, you know, apparently God let this happen or let that happen. You need to revise that. You remember John 10.10, 10, the, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. It wasn't God. God wasn't involved in it. The devil did it. So repent before the Lord says, Lord, for, sorry for being mad at you. Turn around and get on with your life. Say, okay, Lord, I've, I've wasted so many times. I've wasted, I've wasted years. Forgive me, Father. And let's carry on. I, I, I challenge you to respond to God's call. And I challenge you to leave a mark that will echo in the annals of history. My friends... My families, my loved ones, God bless you. 
God bless you this week. God bless you in abundance. May you take your calling, make your calling and election sure. May you become serious about your calling and see the supernatural event that God will bring in your life. God bless you. Shalom.